OLE technology is all about. So here, to embed the document from one application to another application, reduce the complexity, we started using the concept of COM technology. MSIL in the sense of Microsoft Intermediate Language Component Object Modeling. So guys, this is what we call it as a COM technology. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on the .NET programming. Uh, guys, hope all of you have seen my previous session and the topics what we have done in the previous session too. So, today's session is going to be something interesting and uh, more important uh, is what I would like to tell all of you at this point of time. So, why is it so? Because this topic, whatever I'm going to explain now, so that you can expect in your examination. So, this is going to be one of the eight marker or a seven marker question in your examination. So what is that then? Let's check. So this topic, origin of .NET technology is one of the hot topic that you can expect in the first unit question for seven or eight marks. So please make a note of it. So why should we study this? What is that we will understand by studying out of this? Let me explain that. So guys, you will understand how exactly .NET technology evolved face by face is what you will be learning in this topic. So without wasting much of your time, let me take you to the concepts. So before you start answering anything, so first thing that you need to list is these three things. This is going to be very, very important. What is that? So this is the three major technology that we are adopting in the .NET uh, technology stage by stage. So how, what? So let me explain on that. So guys, the first thing that we started with the OLE technology in the 1990s, especially in the early phase. So that is very, very important. You need to mention this phase one early 1990s. That's a very important point because I'll tell you why it is very important in the next part. So in the first phase, we were using the OLE technology and this technology was helping us to provide inter-process communication. Imagine I have two process. If I want to communicate between two process, I was using the technology called OLE technology. So I will be discussing about this OLE technology in detail now. So what is that? OLE technology is the object linking and embedding technology. So which will help me to do any modifications of one object to another object which is there in a different software. So that is what you need to observe here. So what is the meaning of it? So observe carefully. Let me explain that here with a point. What exactly that OLE technology is all about? So here to embed the document from one application to another application. So here the document is all about the object that they are trying to explain. So repeat, I will repeat for all of you. To embed the document from one application to another application, I'm using the concept or the technology called OLE technology. Sir, can you, can you just give us an example to understand this OLE technology? Imagine I have the word file, okay? Imagine I have the word file which I have opened, okay? One more file I will open. So the co content of the word file one, whatever I have, so easily I will copy and I will uh, paste it in the second file. So this technology was introduced and you know, it was very helpful because we were into the OLE technology. This was helping us to do that job. That is what you need to remember. The content, whatever I have in a one document can be modified in, you know, with another document easily with the help of the OLE technology. This is all about the OLE technology that you need to remember. What is the next one that I have? The next one that I have is all about the COM technology. What is this COM technology? Observe here carefully, let me explain. So this COM technology was introduced in the phase two 1995. Why we were using this? Because inter-module communication. Observe the word which I am using here. Inter-module. Then inter-module in the sense, obviously, I am not using the process here. I am using the modules. Observe here. If I want to communicate between the modules, so which technology you guys were using? COM technology. So in which year? 1995. What exactly COM technology is all about? Component object 
modeling. So guys, this is what we call it as a COM technology. Let me speak about this in detail. So COM technology, so this is what uh, they have mentioned here. Imagine I have a very big software. So it is very difficult for me to manage the entire software as a single unit. So because I will be getting a, a lot of issues. So it is very difficult to manage the lot of issues when I treat that entire software as one unit. So to solve this problem, what I did is, so we divided, not we, okay, they have done it. So they have divided the main software as a small, small modules, small, small modules in the sense one module is designed or developed to perform one single task. Sir, they have designed and developed the modules to perform one single task. One module can perform only one task. That is what you need to remember here. So they have divided the main software into small, small modules. The reason behind it is to reduce the complexity. So that is the major thing that you need to observe here. So to reduce the complexity, we started using the concept of COM technology. So that is one of the advantage or one of the plus point that we had with respect to this. It reduces the overall complexity of software. So that is what the first thing. And it enables the distributed development across multiple organizations or departments. What is the meaning of it? Say for example, uh, if it is a complete software, so only uh, no, the which is not divided into modules, I have to do it by alone. So, but when I divide that into modules, I will give some people, so you develop this functionality or this module, you develop this module. So I can distribute among everybody. So that is what I will call it as a distributed development. Parallelly, everybody will be working on each module. So it is a separate, separate modules. So that is possible. And that was possible because of this COM technology. That is what you need to remember here. And the last one, it enhances software maintainability. It is very easy. So we can identify the errors quickly where exactly the error is coming from and we can fix the errors very easily. So that is the last advantage that we have with respect to the COM technology. What are the next and the last one that we have? Let us check that. The last one is .NET technology. Observe here carefully. This was introduced in the phase three in the late 90s. Observe early 90s and late 90s and this was helping us for an inter-site communication. Inter-site communication. This is for inter-process communication. This is inter-module communication. This is inter-site communication. So observe here. Mainly I will be dealing with the web here. So fine. How exactly uh, this .NET technology is different from COM? So we were using the COM technology and then we replaced that COM technology with one of the major leading change that is my dear students you need to make a note of MSIL. What is this MSIL? We were using the COM technology so the COM got replaced with MSIL. MSIL in the sense of Microsoft Intermediate Language. I repeat Microsoft Intermediate Language. Any language with the .NET technology started converting into the intermediate language so that so it is very easy for them to communicate between the languages. So this was the major advantage that we had in the .NET technology because of this MSIL, MS in the sense Microsoft Intermediate Language. So any language, whatever I have in the .NET technology, first it should get converted into intermediate language. So from that intermediate language, so it can get converted into any other languages. So that is the major thing that you need to understand. So what is that you're trying to explain with the intermediate language? We're not getting it. So let me explain that. Guys, listen to me carefully. There are three people, okay? There are how many people? Three people. The first person knows Canada, okay? What does he know? He knows Canada. The third person knows Malayalam. Third person knows Malayalam. Now they should speak. How they will speak? Because he doesn't know Malayalam. He doesn't know Canada. This guy doesn't know Malayalam. Then how do they exchange the information? 
So for that, somebody should be there for translation, right? So what I'm trying to do here is first person, whatever he is speaking. Okay. So I will change that into English. Okay. This person knows English. So he is taking this English and then he is translating it into Malayalam. So this is how the communication is happening. So now this English is a intermediate language, which is working for both of them to exchange the information. So this is how, so MSIL is helping here. This is how the MSIL is helping here. That's why I call it as a intermediate language. All right. So this is how the .NET technology evolved. Okay. This is going to be very important for your examination part. So by saying this, I've come to an end of this concept. So happy learning. Take care. Bye-bye. See you in the next uh, session.